Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half R-Pod 196 travel trailer by Forest River RVs. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside of the RV along with the outside of the RV and then we're going to close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside this new R-Pod 196 trailer here. We're going to start here in the bedroom section and kind of spin our way back around. Looking here, obviously, at the bedroom, you have a hanging closet on each side of the bed. And there is a little LED backlighting inside there. A little switch on the left cabinet will turn that on and off for you. You have a little kind of nightstand area beside the bed as well, so you could set your drinks or alarm clock, something like that, or you could even put something up on the shelf if you wanted to. But on the left and right side of the bed, there's USB charger port that you can see down there, along with an electric outlet as well. Now the bed is a 60 by 74 queen bed, so it's what they call a camper queen or a short queen. And this actually will raise up, so there is some storage underneath of there also. Plenty of room to walk around this bed and kind of maneuver around as you need to. Now on the end of the wall here is a 28 inch flat screen TV. That is a 12 volt TV, so you basically We'll be able to run that off your battery power. On the uh, little cabinet there that's up there, a little bitty uh, shelf area up there, your radio is also inside there. So you do have a small radio up there. There's one speaker right there above the TV, and there's another one back there toward the kitchen area. So you have two internal speakers for the radio, and then you're going to also have two external speakers as well. On the side of the uh, wall here is your digital thermostat for your air conditioner and your furnace. Just down below on the wall there is the propane leak detector slash carbon monoxide detector. The unit does have a jackknife sofa which will fold down and make into a bed. There's a little freestanding table that you can also use in case you need to eat inside here instead of outside. Um, you do have a small table where you can sit down and relax. Now the TV will also spin around. It's on a, a uh, swing arm, so you can swing that around and see the TV from the couch area. Up top there you can obviously see a little bit of cabinetry right there. All the windows in the camper do open except for the front windshield. You can obviously see the new cabinets here as well. This is a new cabinet color. The bathroom area has a sliding pocket door. You have a corner shower, a little square shower. It does have a pull across curtain. And even though it is a curtain instead of a glass door kind of thing, it is on a track system at the top and bottom. So it kind of holds it in place so it's less likely to leak compared to just a free hanging curtain. You have a skylight up above there just to kind of give you a few extra inches of height. Up top, you also have a large turbo exhaust fan as well. Traditional wood medicine cabinet little bit of storage below the sink area along with a little area to the left there. Decent amount of counter space. Again, we're in a small unit so it's not going to be as big as some of the monster fifth wheels and stuff I normally video, but definitely a nice unit for a lightweight RV. And you have a foot flush toilet down there as well. And the whole goal of these R-Pods is to be on the smaller, lighter weight side. The 202 that they just came out with, I videoed last, was the largest one they'd ever made. 
Normally, this is kind of the biggest they had before that, and then they had a few smaller ones that you all probably know about already, but um, definitely a nice lightweight RV to get you started with or just to make quick trips with. Over there on the left is a six cubic foot gas and electric Dometic refrigerator. Just below that is the electric box with your breakers and fuses along with the central vac system which has the dustpan vac so you can just sweep everything right into it. Convection microwave there so you can cook or microwave either one so it'll do both. You have a little bit of storage on the left and three pull-out full extending ball burn drawer guides. Just directly below that convection microwave is also your propane furnace. The furnace is spun by 12 volt power, so as long as you've got a battery and propane, then you can fire up the heat. So if you are a boondock camper or you're just stopping on a you know, quick rest area road trip to take a break and it's kind of cool outside, you could fire that up without even being plugged in. Good size round sink, it's kind of recessed down with a nice little cover, high rise faucet. Then you have a two burner cooktop which does have the glass lid that flips up, acts as a backsplash, or you flip it down and just give yourself a little more counter space. Hood range with the light and fan built in, and some overhead storage also. Now this one was also ordered with the solar package. You'll see that when I, we get outside a little bit, but uh, this has a 100 watt solar panel on board and also a 1000 watt inverter, which works some of the electric outlets. The unit also now uses the Tough Flex roof, which has a 15 year material warranty instead of a 12 year, which most other versions have. And you also have the large pantry right there, which is part of the slide out system as well. I wanted to show you this too. These uh, little shelves are adjustable. So if you need some extra height in between or something, you can adjust those shelves. But overall, pretty cool little unit. It's been a very popular model for the R-Pod since they came out with it. Over here on the side by the door, you do have some little coat hooks so you can hang some things up here. Down below is the pet-friendly bowl, your fire extinguisher, and a little bit of access panel down there as well. Right here is going to be your monitor panel. So this will tell you your battery condition, your fresh water, black water, and gray water, how full they're getting. Your water heater on gas switch lights right here. Your water pump switch to turn on the fresh water tank is here. You don't need that if you're hooking to city water. Awning in and out button, slide out in and out button, the awning light button, porch light, and interior light switch. Now, when you also do the solar panel, this is the charge port here, the charge controller basically. 12 volt, 10 amp solar charge controller right here. And you can also see here the door does have a window. This is a new door. You'll see that when we get outside and talk about that a little more. But there's a window and it's prepped for the slim shade. If you wanted to get that slim shade, pop it in there and you can close that off for privacy as well. It's one thing I've always thought was kind of weird on RVs. They put a window there, but then there's no nothing to block out for privacy. I don't know why they do that, but pretty much every RV that does a window does that for some reason. All right, guys, we are going to head outside, show you around the outside of this one, and then we're going to come back in and close up the slide and show you that as well. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of this new R Pod 196 trailer here. And uh, we're going to start here in the front section, kind of work our way around here from the door side. This particular unit was ordered with the optional outside kitchen. So now on the outside kitchen feature, you have a small griddle along with a little dump sink and a little sprayer port hose. If you don't do the outdoor kitchen, you do still get the sprayer port hose, but you lose the griddle and you lose the little dump sink. 
Now, if you watched my RPOD 202 video I did a couple weeks back, you obviously seen the new graphics. So this has changed. This again is the new version, mid-year model change. So you have the gray fiberglass along the bottom, white more up on the top, and then you have kind of the honeycomb effect graphic in the middle. Still have the deep tent safety glass windows, a little uh, new frog guy up there. The unit has a power awning, which does have adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. You also have your LED light strip up there as well. The awning also has a way to manually crank it in in case of an electronic failure. You have two outdoor speakers here. You also have a traditional RV porch light up there with a little amber lens. The 196 model, obviously you can see here, is a single axle unit. It is a torsion flex axle, so no leaf springs. It's a little bit more of an independent suspension and just makes it ride a little bit nicer and better. Um, in front of the wheel well there is the black tank flush to clean out the toilet tank. Again, the bathroom is on this side of the RV, so it is plumbed on this side. Um, you do have an electric outlet there as well. Now you can see the new black door, which again you've seen in that RPOD 202 video I did. But really cool, they changed up this door and it has a window in it. You don't really see the window per se during the daytime, uh, but it is kind of a glass window, glass door in general. Large folding entry handle there to help you get in and out of the RV. And then right next to that is your uh, model number, some informational stickers, and the Asdale on board sticker. Asdale is a huge, really nice improvement to the construction of an RV when it comes to these fiberglass RVs. Fiberglass is basically glued normally to an eighth inch wood Luon board. But when they do Asdale, it replaces the wood Luon board with a man-made composite material that doesn't rot, mold, or mildew. So it, the unit, if it ever were to leak on the outside, the fiberglass is less likely to delaminate from any type of glue letting go. There's no wood in that to rot, basically. So a much nicer improvement. It's also lighter weight, a better insulator and sound deadener than the wood glue on board that lesser units use. Now down in the lower back corner back there is the little pet friendly leash hook on this model. You have a double entrance step to get you in and out of the coach as well. On the back of the RV you have the traditional four inch square tube bumper. Um, you could put a dump hose in there, you could put a small lightweight bike rack for maybe one bike on there, nothing super heavy. Um, they're only rated for a few hundred pounds. The uh, Spare tire mounted on the back, you can see there. You have a ladder to get you up onto the roof. It is a full walk on roof, so you can get up there and walk around, inspect the RV. It's not something you wanna get up there and dance around on kind of thing, but it is something you could get up there and do maintenance and just kind of maintain things. Um, the unit is pre-wired for a backup camera just in the uh, top section there below that middle light is a black little piece right there that is where you would remove that and put the backup camera or observation camera on there. I like the Furion observation camera, nice camera. Uh, they've used it at Couches RV Nation for a long time there. So that's something that uh, I would definitely recommend you talk with your salesperson about if that does interest you. In the back right corner here is the water heater. So your electric switch is on the lower left corner of that water heater when you open that door. Just above that is the refrigerator panel for access of maintenance. Just to the left of the spare tire there is the furnace exhaust. Now that does get really hot. Obviously it's blowing out exhaust heat. So if you do put like a bike rack or some type of rack on the back of there, make sure that in the winter time or fall, you're not gonna fire that up and damage whatever you put back here. On this back corner here, you can obviously see that orange handle there. That is your detachable power cord. It's a 30 amp electric service power cord. They're usually somewhere around 25 to 30 feet long, but you basically just detach it when you don't need it, roll it up, throw it in a storage compartment. 
It's less likely to get cut off and stolen, which is something that has happened in the past. So be a little careful there. Cable and satellite hookups right there as well. So you can plug into a campground or to your house's cable system. You have two dumps on here. The bathroom section up there in front of the axle and the kitchen sink section back here behind the axle. So your gray tank in the back, your black tank in the front. And that is done in part because this is not a traditional jacked up large RV where there's plenty of room to run piping across there. Uh, with this torsion flex axle and the RV sitting lower to the ground for smaller vehicles, there's not enough ground clearance there. So that is the reason why it is done separately. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but to make the RV functional for people with smaller vehicles, that is the way they do it. Um, slide out is an electric slide. It's a Schwintec slide or in wall slide as it's now referred to. Um, so basically you push a button, it goes in and out. There's a little track system on each side of the uh, slide there to keep it straight. Um, that can be manually done in case of an electronic failure. There's some uh, information on Lippert, which is lci1.com. That is their website. They have owner's manuals and maintenance manuals, service manuals, all kinds of crazy stuff on there to help with that in case you ever do run into a problem. Hopefully you don't, but you never know. The storage door right here, obviously pass through storage across there. Um, but right to the right of that is your fresh water tank fill along with your city water hookup. And just down below that is where you would put your drain cap on for your fresh water tank drain. So when you're done using that portable tank, if you did use it at all, you just undo the cap, drain it out. Uh, if you go somewhere that has city water, you can just hook right up and not even need to use that. Popping up here now, we're going to do the gross vehicle weight sticker. That has your axle information on it, along with your production date, VIN number, and gross weight, some of that type of stuff. Next is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker, which just basically, again, has your serial number on it, and then the dry weight that was stamped on it when it rolled off the factory line. Next up is going to be your carrying capacity sticker. And that basically just tells you how much you can load into the vehicle. And then you're gonna also see your tire sticker, which basically is just telling you your tire pressure and size and stuff like that. Now on around to the very front here, you can see again, nice roll smooth fiberglass exterior. Has a little frameless windshield look to it there. Power tongue jack with a built-in light manual override. Now this being a single axle R-Pod is a two inch hitch ball, where a double axle R-Pod like the 202 would be a two and five sixteenths. So keep that in mind, depending on the model that you're looking at. Safety chain, seven way Bargman plug with your electric brakes and your lighting and all that feeds through that cord. Uh, it has a little holder for that. Then you also have 20 pound propane tank bottle under that black cover there and there's room for one or two deep cycle batteries to go on the front of it depending on the batteries that you're interested in uh, the unit will come with one deep cycle interstate battery from couches rv nation when you purchase from them it doesn't come with any from the manufacturer so wherever you buy make sure you do at least get one um, little red box there on the corner is the battery disconnect switch so if you put it into storage you flip that little switch to store the RV and basically can help keep your battery from going dead all right guys I appreciate you checking this out we're gonna run inside real quick close up the slide show you what that looks like and we'll be right back in there all right guys we're back in the RV here and again I wanted to show you this slide close uh, so again, over here by your door, on your little control box over here, you have your in button. So we hit the button, the slide starts to come in here. Now if I needed to stop because I had something in the way or anything like that, I can actually stop, let off the button. If you ready to go again, you just hit the button.
So that's all there is to it. It's in now. So kind of gets you an idea what this all looks like here with it closed up. Blocks off the convection microwave, so you can't really get to that. But you still can get to your cabinets and stuff. You could technically still use the uh, stove if you needed to. You could fire up the furnace down there if you needed to. You can walk right into the coach. Pretty much use the RV if you needed. So if you're at a rest area or Walmart parking lot loading with groceries or something, you could come in here and do basically anything you needed to. Obviously it's a little tight, but it is doable. And another thing I like about that feature, being able to come in here, even when the side slide is closed, let's just say you started your camping trip, you get there and say your slide broke. Hopefully that never happens, but if it did, you wouldn't just ruin your whole weekend. You could still technically camp and not have loss of half your camper. So that's a nice feature to be able to fully get in here and use what needs to be used. Again, it wouldn't be fun, but it is still usable. There's some models of RVs when the slide is closed, you can't do anything in there. So little advantage to this layout. All right, guys, I appreciate it a lot. Check out CouchesRVNation.com. Again, one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. Largest R-Pod Nobo dealer in the country as well. Definitely going to save you guys a ton of money. Thanks again, guys.